I think is a pretty good pivot point to talking about something that I was very excited to talk about last week, which is uh, Project Spartacus is no longer a rumor. It's a oh thing. Oh my God, I forgot we were even going to talk about that and we're already like yep. an hour in. Yeah. Um, but PlayStation Plus is becoming a new three-tiered service. Um, so we've got PlayStation Plus Essential, which is the way that PlayStation Plus is now. Then there's PlayStation Plus Extra, which I don't know if anybody's got it up, but I can pull it up if not. Um, but PlayStation Plus Extra also includes like some other things. Like I think it's PlayStation Now. I got it. They're, they're you got discontinuing it? PlayStation Now from what I understand it, and they're basically lumping yeah. it into Play PlayStation Plus. Yeah, PlayStation... Way. PlayStation Plus Essential provides the same benefits that current PlayStation Plus members are getting today. PlayStation Plus Extra provides all the benefits from the Essential tier, adds a catalog of up to 400 of the most enjoyable PS4 and PS5 games, including Blockbuster, we don't know what they are. Including blockbuster hits from our PlayStation Studios catalog and third-party partners. Games in the Extra tier are downloadable to play. That is for, uh, 15 a month, 40 for a quarter or a hundred for a year. Then there's PlayStation Plus Premium, which this is like the big one that I think most people are interested in. Not not in getting, but just like what it offers. Provided or provides all the benefits from the essential and extra tiers, adds up to 340 additional games, including PS3 games available via cloud streaming. A catalog of beloved classic games available in both streaming and download options from the original PlayStation PS2 and PSP generations. Offers cloud streaming access for original PlayStation, PS2, PSP, and PS4 games offered in the extra and premium tiers in markets where PlayStation Now is currently available. Customers can stream games using PS4 and PS5 consoles and PC. Time-limited game trials will also be included in this tier, so customers can try select games before they buy. Um, select games. Select game trials. Yes, and also... Yeah, yeah okay, so... There's a the lot. I just the said a price lot. There's a lot of to talk about. The yeah. price isn't terrible for what that is, right? Because it could have been more expensive. For twenty more dollars a year compared to the other one, like I would just get the premium one. Yeah, uh, yeah. Which is what they want you to do. Anyway. They want yeah. you to do that anyway. Um, that that being said, I'm I'm not changing my. I'm not. Current subscription. I, it's it's twice. Twice I'll, as expensive a year for a bunch of games that I don't know what they are. And yeah. also, how many of them are downloadable versus streaming? And if they're downloadable, do they actually work correctly? Well, if it's... Um, yeah. So, no, I mean, it's Which PS4 and PS5 games Which would be a question if we hadn't if we hadn't experienced well, they, what's going they on with PS5 the, where stuff just doesn't work. Yeah, right. but they mentioned that some of the PS2 games, I think, and some of the PS1 games are also going to be downloadable. Yeah, so what it sounds like... in the Digital Foundry video I watched too where they were right. talking about this. And that that part is like, that sounds great, but which ones are they and will they actually work? Because based on you know what Brian just said, based on like a lot of the problems that the PS5 has had, like backwards compatibility and things like that being like a complete after, like it's pretty clear it was a complete afterthought. Like, d are these- How even good is the emulation? Right? Yeah, yeah, how good is the, like, am I gonna be better off just playing like, uh, you know, Spyro on Bleem on my computer, right? Probably, no, I, yeah. I think that's their biggest problem. And that's is the that... sad part is probably, yeah. Yeah, like the biggest red flag to me is the fact that they still haven't gotten um, PS3 working through emulation. And I say that because um, our PCS3 has gotten, which is a PS3 emulator on uh, Windows and Linux, has come very far. Um, it's not, it's by, by no means is it perfect, but they've made like tremendous strides in getting yeah. games to run at like 60 frames a second that otherwise wouldn't on PS3 hardware. I checked um, that emulator out the other day, but it seemed like the compatibility list still wasn't quite as It's big pretty as small. Yeah, it's not huge. Um, it's a lot of like, um, like PlayStation Minis and like um, PlayStation, like PSN games, like those types of titles. Um, some of the first happens, party like, stuff. Cell processor is difficult to work with, notoriously. So yeah. like, we get it, but PlayStation should definitely be putting in the effort and the money and the time to 
do it properly. I think that's the thing though, is like it, it is another one of those instances where like not a lot of people use it. But even though I'm on the side of you should do it, because I like the idea that I can put in my copy of you know, my the some Heavenly Sword original or... Xbox yeah, some original Xbox game that I own or something, and I can put it in my brand new Xbox and still play it, right? Like this thing I bought yeah. decades ago. Um I I We I, talked about respecting your time, this is respecting your Respecting your money. Your money. Yeah. yeah. And your investment because yeah, like um they brought up a good point on the digital foundry one where they're like consoles have always been really bad at this outside of like Sony for the longest time was on, on the best at it and then Nintendo with the Game Boy until they yeah, went Yeah, PS2 to the and then the launch PS3 was yeah. great. Uh now excuse me. Um if you think about PC, PC is probably, it is the best at backwards yeah. compatibility. And a lot of it's not even just, it's because people like make it, right? So like if a game from 1994, you know, doesn't really run, like people find a way to make it run. Like they have like DOSBox, like that emulator is huge and plays like probably I would assume just based on seeing the compatibility list, most old pc games like old big box pc games can be played through things like dos box well now or you have like the like mr like project version. and yeah um you know you have a lot of fpga cores that you know people are really diving headfirst into now we're we're well, like even when, without when that really sorry when that gets like finished getting finished is finished getting fleshed out that's hard to say um the it's the type of thing where like once that's done like a lot of that front end work like there's not going to be a need for anybody to have to reinvent the wheel on this like mm -hmm. once fp the, once we have the fpga course for like n64 ps1 like eventually we'll get to a point where it's like all right you have this one unit and it runs exactly like it did on original hardware or as close as it can possibly get like it's not it's not like, yeah. you know, you have like these sound compression issues and all these other things that people um, like to point out whenever you're running emulation versus like traditional hardware. Um, yeah. So like a lot of this is going to go away. Unfortunately, in the case of like the, the PS3 is like the redheaded stepchild with all this because it's never until computing gets so far ahead of where we are even now and GPUs get so far ahead even now, like you have to have enough people that are interested enough in trying to support the damn thing. So like you have to have a community of developers that are going to be like, all right, computing's finally there. S emulating cell processing like is no skin off our back, like whatever. Um, or the hardware's for that matter. And you just have to have enough people that want to do it. Um, yeah. Which at that point, it's like, how many, how many titles are we actually saving? Like it can't be that many. Like, and, and I made this argument before. Where, yes, there are exclusive PS3 games that, like, are trapped on that platform, but I feel like it, it, it's, like, do the ends justify the means? Like, do are we really going to pour this many resources into getting 40 games back that haven't yeah. had an HD remaster at this point? To them, it's not worth it. Right, because um, it's well, all. Even, and it'll, it, and stuff. it'll happen. The like, HD remaster is different than the base game, also. Right, sure. like there's an element to which I definitely agree with you that people probably feel this way. But I think that if there was any company that needed to care about it, it's Sony. It's the company that fucking owns the platform. Sure. Like yeah, but like you know, I feel like we. I don't. Know, I I can't even say that. I was gonna say I feel like we tend to get more upset with Sony than any other platform holder. And I don't know that that's necessarily true because we do get mad at Nintendo. It's just, I think, with, the, with Nintendo, it's expected. With Sony, we feel like it's it's been taken away from us. You know what I mean? Well, and, and also, I think that, I, I think that you, you are right. We are typically hard with Sony, but I think that that's because Sony makes a lot of unforced errors. Like nobody forced them to make the cell processor. They did it themselves yeah. and then they didn't support it. And then they didn't figure out how to emulate for it. Yeah. And then they didn't like push people to like make ports. There are so many solutions and they didn't opt to do any of them uh, except like just stream off of an ever decreasing volume of banked PS3s in some warehouse somewhere. 
Um, but another thing with Nintendo is a lot of their classic stuff that people want to have access to is super easily emulated on everything down to fucking cell phones. You know, mm -hmm. like if you want to play the best stuff that Nintendo has, a lot of it's on NES and SNES and N64. And that stuff is even, incredibly easy to emulate. Even things that never came out here. Yeah, you can exactly. Get them yeah. Here, you know. Yeah, you can definitely get them, and they cost basically nothing to like get running because those emulators have existed since time immemorial. Yeah. You know, I think the problem is is that we run into the the confluence of this stuff was just never bothered to bring forward. Some stuff got ported. You know, we've got Last of Us remastered, which is great. We've got the you know uh, the Nathan Drake collection, which is great. You know, and I, I'm I'm for all of these things, but at the same time, we've got things like Persona 4 Arena, which like until Ultimax came out on Steam was something that was only available on, you know, PS3 and 360. And thankfully Xbox made that backwards compatible, but Ultimax was unavailable until Atlas decided to port it to Steam. And even then it's the 2.0 arcade version from Japan. It's not the version from console. Mm -hmm. So like that version is still not available if you wanted to play 1.0. Um, and, you know, there's a lot of stuff like that. There's stuff like Fat Princess. There's like all this sort of like cool indie stuff that's just gone. And, I, and I'm at, you know, maybe, maybe I have this stance because now like I have finally done the thing that I've been talking about doing for years where like I do have the emulation PC. Like I can play pretty much anything that I can think of anytime I want with like very little work at this point because I've already put in the work to get it set up. But you had to put that work in. I had to put that work in, exactly. Yeah. And that I think that's a very important point to stress um, because, you know, Sony's not putting in for it. Um, and, and granted, I also still have my PS3 hardware, but... I wish I, I did, but it failed. I, I think the point I'm trying to make is, too, like, I think. what's funny about that generation is, like, even the games that I go back to, even the ones on 360, like, there's very few of them that I go back to, and I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm going to play this to completion. Like, yeah. I play yeah. it for an afternoon, and then I'm like, all right, I got that out of my system, and then I move on. Like, uh, and I think that's part of the reason. I mean, like, Jim Ryan, and, like, again, I'm not trying to take the, the defense on this at all. It's just, like, this is why I'm not subscribing to this, because I, yeah. I don't need to. Um, like, Jim Ryan even said, he's like, no, we're focusing on the games that we're making now everything else like whatever and it's from a preservation standpoint it's terrible i'm fortunate enough that i have the ability to play those games still because i have my original hardware and i have an emulated pc um but for everybody else like yeah it sucks but with everything else that we have that comes out on a weekly basis and in game pass i mean we're fortunate enough that we have you know game pass and switch online and whatever like are you really itching that badly to play Haze again? Like, <laughs> what a random game to bring up. And that's, for some reason, every time this conversation, like, comes up, that's the game I think of. Is, is I'm uh, like, yeah, why? We're, fo we're, we're arguing over this game. for Haze? Like, who yeah. cares? There's so many other things to play. <laughs> you, know what else, you know what else was on PS3? Journey. But, yeah, but that uh, and, got a better port. That's what I mean, like, I, and, and that's the, the argument for a lot of these games. Yeah, but while I get that, I think the other part of it is that, you know, people grow up, like, buying all these games, and then they just become these things that sit on a shelf. They're not, like, a thing that you can go back to. Whereas, like, if you buy a DVD, weirdly enough now, 20 years later, that DVD still works in your brand new thing and you can still, that is it's valid gonna look it's gonna kind of look like crap on your 4k tv but i can put it in my ps5 and it still works i can yeah. yeah i can pop my dvd and i can still watch my copy of whatever like now now i might you know i might want to upgrade to the new one you know and pay money yeah. you know to get like lord of the rings blu-rays or whatever have you right because Yo. i want it to look good or it has new features or something that is totally valid but like the idea that like my the thing that i bought when I was leaning Chris 15 now it doesn't work anymore or it, you know works, but not quite the same is I don't, I think that's, <laughs> that's lame. And it's less, it's, it's more valid with like when you're saying we're going from cartridges to CDs, right? 
I the think that's 4K release yeah. of Lord of the Rings looks yeah. amazing. It does. Um, that's all I wanted to say. <laughs> when you're going from a cartridge to a CD format or whatever, totally valid. But like now we're in this age where we own like all these games digitally, right? And we've bought... A lot of us bought like Super Mario Brothers for the fifth time on the Wii shop and now we don't have it again. And they're like, hey, you could subscribe to this thing on the Switch and get it again. I'm like, dude, I've bought this game five or six times. But okay. <laughs> you, know, you, know. But you know what I'd like to have access to? And this is this is like kind of a fuck you to the Hayes argument. You know what else is trapped on PS3? Fucking Infamous. infamous I was waiting 2. for you to bring that infamous up. Infamous Festival of Blood. Those are three bangers and i can't play them are those bangers. are there are like if i were to pick uh a couple franchises that like i can't believe they never did hd re-releases for on the ps4 it's those it's those it's sly cooper um heavenly sword i really thought like they were gonna try and like revitalize that i think they didn't you got because jim of ryan it. at the top saying why would you want to play that old game is old yeah that old game he's that basically is an like, internet troll yeah, yeah. That old game that like people in my company worked hard on, even though yeah, you know, yeah. good or bad, right? But Ill like, Grill Chill still. said, "Isn't one of the Metal Gears only on PS3?" Yeah, Metal Gear Four, yep. Metal Gear Solid Four, yep. Guns of the Patriots is only on PS3. Now, thankfully for me, that's my least favorite, so I don't care. It can be trapped there forever. Yeah, I but like, I know people who love that one. I don't like four or five either, but that doesn't mean other people shouldn't be allowed to play it. Sure. Especially <laughs> Mr. if they bought it. Mr. Hergie and Chat says, can you believe they didn't do an AD an HD re-release of Link's crossbow trick? Can you believe can that they haven't it back. bring it back? They're re-releasing Switch Sport or Wii Sports with Switch Sports. I want uh Breath of the Wild style Link's crossbow training on the Switch. Make it happen, Nintendo. But I want but I want an open world like Breath of the Wild where like I can wander. And if I want to go to the final crossbow training section straight out of the gate, I can do it. Yep. Hey, you know, speaking of that, roast though, some apples, I can do that either. All, all the things aside, because it was like a mess at launch, but Master Chief Collection is like the perfect example of how example to do it. Example of like preserving an old game where it's like, hey, I want to jump to, I remember this tank level in Halo 2 and I really want to play that again. And instead of having to go through the yeah. whole thing, like, all right, here you go. What a concept. Like treat, they even treating made games cross like game DVD playlists, menus, right? Here's every vehicle mission. Yeah. Here's I will, every mission in all the games where you play all three. I'm all still the gonna bring up my my complaint that I've brought up before though, is that I hate that I can't put in my original Halo disc into the Xbox. I think the that's Xbox dumb Series too. X. I, I'm with you. Like just you. let me do it. You used to let I'm me do with, it. Yeah, I am with you and I think that's stupid. Yeah. Um, that menu there's something like religious about the menu in Halo One and the loading screen in Halo yeah. One. Yeah, it's very it's very simple, but yes, it's got everything you need. You yep. pick your color, you pick your dumb name, you're, you're off. You're good you to know? go. You're good to go. Um, yeah, it's. Uh, I I do think that that thing is stupid. So I just, all of all yeah. of this being said. Yeah, we need to go back to the actual. We need like, to go back to the actual <laughs> thing at hand. hand. I will not be subscribing to anything beyond I'm not the original going PlayStation to. Plus. I'm not going to be. Brian? I am going to stay subscribed until the last of my friends is not playing Elden Ring anymore, and then I'm probably going to cancel wow. PS Plus altogether. Yeah. I've gotten close to getting rid of PS Plus, but the problem is that a few of my friends who I... Don't play games with that often, but play with them enough to justify having to own it. Like, don't have th they have kids, they have a PlayStation. That's what they have, you know. Like, yeah. they don't get to play games yeah. that often, but when they do, they have their PlayStation, and they're like, "We're gonna play Battlefront, or we're gonna play like Fall Guys or something." And it's like, okay, so I I can justify it for that, and like occasionally getting a free game or you know whatever, but. I, I'm with it's you, Brian. It's been so long since they've put something on PS Plus that I actually cared about enough to try. I don't even know what the games this month are, if I'm being... You know what's on uh, there? Slay the Spire honest. is one, yeah, which Slay... is good, but like I've oh, already Slay the Spire got that great. three different Spongebob times. SpongeBob SquarePants Battle for Bikini Bottom is another one. It's a great, uh, great third person that's a, that's a fucking Chris That's a, a game Chris Shriver-ass game if I've ever seen one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But you should play Splay. Uh, Splay. And then, Slay and then I think Hood is the last one. Yeah, Hood's I the last one. I think Hood is one. the last one. Yeah. 
Holy which God. I have not played. That's that Ubisoft uh, multiplayer thief game. Yeah. Oh, that came out. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I didn't know that. Uh, Lumbago said Slay the Spire is also on Game Pass. I'm pretty sure it, it is. was. I don't know if it's still. I don't know is. if it is. I think it still it is. It definitely was. I think it was on. I it's think on Epic both. gave it away as well at one point. Um, I'm pretty yeah, sure it's PC still on. Console, I'm yeah. pretty. I'm pretty sure it's still Which on is Game a great Pass because I still jump into when it I, so often. When I was in the throes of my uh, of my RSI, that was one of the games that I could play without uh, feeling yeah. pain. So well, yeah, that was a, that was a that was a really. I'm always going to remember Slay the Spire for that one. I have a random question. Um, yeah. Did anybody play Super Meat Boy Forever? Because that game came out, and I feel like no one talked about it. No. I played it only hasn't... Super Meat Boy, the original, when it came out on 360, and it was like all It still rate. says coming soon on Steam, so I have not played it. No. <laughs> there, it's been on Switch for a while. I think it's on Epic Game Store. I think they, Oh, you know what? Yeah, I think Epic Game Store had like an exclusive... Okay. Like a timed exclusive. I was going to talk to that. Team Meat uh, to review that one because I played it on. Uh, I played it at, at PAX. Yeah, I keep forgetting um, that it came I, out, and then I see it, and I'm like, "Ooh, should I get that?" And then I don't. And I talked to Edmund. I had fun with it. I played the. I think the first level of that game uh, at PAX during our uh, interview. Yeah. Uh, and I had a really good time with it. I really, really like it. Hmm. Uh, of of just what I played, I haven't played the final build, but um, I should reach out to them and see if I can get a key for that because I I enjoyed it. I'd love to cover it. Yeah. Um, I thought it was interesting because it kind of, in some ways it's easier and in some ways it's harder than Super Meat Boy because it sets the pace, which means you know it can be done. Right. Uh, and all you have to do is jump or do your punch. So I actually found it kind of more, uh, I mean, this might speak to you, Chris. It's kind of rhythm-like um, because is it like the you, you Rayman always, levels? Everything always comes at the, yeah, it's like the Rayman levels. Uh, everything always comes at the same time. When, like when you fail, it's like okay, da, 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 jump and punch and da, 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 jump and jump. And, you know what I mean? Like it, because it's got that rhythm to it, it did feel kind of rhythmic. Um, but I'm yeah, I, I don't know. <laughs> That's fast. I mean, I know, I know. I know his buttons. I know Chris's buttons. Oh, wow. This is cool. I didn't know they did this. What? I just went on. I'm just on Best Buy. Um, they have these, like, these are really cute. They have um, physical. I'll share my screen real quick. Hold on. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba, display. All right. Maybe I won't. Lumba has a question. In I can't okay. While you're. Says, yeah, go, go ahead. Go ahead. It says to sort. Uh, Sort of question what PlayStation is doing. Like, if those games are already pretty wildly available on other platforms, is it going to be worth it? Yeah, and that is that is the thing, because if you are interested in... I mean, I think the short answer is if you're one of the people for whom PlayStation is your main platform, this is kind of a no-brainer. Um. Yeah, I mean, like this you is your game. Pass. If you don't own an Xbox, if you don't own a PC, if you don't own a Switch, if you're just a PlayStation gamer, like this is kind of the option yeah, that you have but the because thing, you're the thing you know, that irks, you're embedded in this system. I get that. The thing that irks me slightly, I think, is that they say it has like 400 to 700 games, none of which they list. Right? They're just like, oh, they're yeah. PlayStation games, but. A lot of those games are probably things that people don't necessarily. Not that not, we shouldn't preserve art. That's right? very but like, cute. New game plush. Isn't that that's cute? That's extremely. They cute. They have a bunch that's of cool. them. Um, I like that yeah. a lot. A, a lot of those games are probably things that like people don't really care about or like aren't you know things we necessarily want to go back to. You might want to go back to just for like chuckles or something, right? Um, but I feel like so much of this depends on the actual yeah. list. But then it's like they they mention that a lot of the, the, the they're all streaming. All these games are streaming, but like some of them are downloadable. But I bet you the ratio of download to stream is incredibly low. Like the I bet there's way like only a couple like of games that are going to be. Downloadable. It depends on if this is ps now or if this or if this is them trying to turn I, over a new leaf i but really because think because of the just, tiered system no I, well i have a hard I really time think it's no, just ps it's now a, tacked onto ps plus yeah it's a rebranding and it's them it's them deploying a 
a licensed emulator for PS1 and PS2 games. That's all yeah, it is. That will hopefully work correctly. And yeah. uh, on top of if that, it is too, just that I'm gonna be real disappointed. On top exactly of that, right. too, that Prepare. no one's really talking about, um, and I'm sure there's not that many of them. So there's probably not a lot of eyeballs on this. But if you're someone who only paid for PS Now, you were paying for basically the uh, equivalent of what someone was paying for PS Plus, you're just straight fucked. Like, you don't get to have PS Now anymore without basically paying double the price for something you're probably not going to use. Again, <laughs> you're going to be paying twice as much for the well, same wait, service. Yeah. No, that's not true. Yeah, because it is. Play PlayStation Now was always a separate thing. It's not anymore. That's no, part no, of the. That's part of oh, it. Yeah, they're getting get rid of it. Saying. Yeah. So if you were paying sixty dollars a year for PS Now, and you just were like, I don't care about PS Plus, I just want to yeah, play my whatever, you. you're screwed now. You basically have to like pay them twice the amount of money to get the exact same service. Yeah. Uh, or just don't have the service anymore. Mom Jum asked a uh, very good question. What game could they include that would make it worth it for you? Um, for me, it's, it's not, not about one game. Well, no, and it's it's not about one game. It's having what if they mean? had if they had a proper PS3 emulator, I get it day one. Like it would, be, I would be waving a PlayStation if, flag from my balcony if they did that. If I could play <laughs> games I bought digitally on my PS3 now on my PS5 and they actually worked, I would be more into it. But why would I? Why should I have to pay? Why more should you have that? to pay for I that? I already yeah. paid for the game, right? Yeah. So like that still doesn't make it okay. That still doesn't make me like excited about it. That just I'm like I already paid for, you know, I already bought Last of Us on PS3 when it came out on my, you know, digitally. Why should I have to why should I have to buy it again? Yeah. Just so cuz it works yeah. on a different box. No, I have why that should other I have box. To I can rent go play it, it again. Right now. Yeah. Cuz that's really yeah, what I have it to is. Rent it again. Yeah. Um which is just it like they make it sound appealing when they're like, look at all the games you're getting. But then you think about 400 it. 400 like, to 700. You, you don't know what the games are. You don't know how they run well. You don't know which ones are downloadable. And on top of that, you don't own them. They're not games that you bought previously. And you're you not know what? I had getting to play about. them. What hadn't you thought about? It's just not a good deal. That's what I'm ending with. I don't, I, I'm not into it. You know what I hadn't thought about? I hadn't thought about the fact that a lot of these PS3 games particularly the ones that were that were uh, also available on 360 didn't run that well. No, they don't. There are a lot of PS3 games well. that did not run well. So unless they are emulating it in a in a in a in an environment where it will run better than it ran on the original PS3, which is not universally true on PS5, uh no people uh who are in the know who are me who are big into Guilty Gear and Elden Ring will note that the best way to play that is not to play the PS5 version, is to play the PS4 version of Guilty Gear Strive and Elden Ring on PS5. Uh, Sony is not great at optimizing this sort of stuff. Uh, and they're not going to do this not, for all those games. That's not completely true. It's not completely no, true, but like, it is at least partially well, no, true. I mean, it's... It, sure. And I, what, I, what I say... The reason I say that is... The like the reason I keep saying the PS5 is one of my favorite consoles of all time is because it's the best PS4 I've ever owned. Like <laughs> the the majority of PlayStation 4 games that I am interested in playing run significantly better on the PS5. Sure, it's just a fact. That's true. That is true for some of them. Yeah. Yeah. I I just I. We should move I, on from this because yeah, we, we should. But we have we should we have talked about this. I'm just gonna to, say to my, death in other episodes as well. I I don't think this is a great <laughs> deal, and I think that it doesn't d do much for game preservation. Like it'll do some, but not nearly enough. Um, yeah, and it's just the fact not, that they're not they're it. streaming and that it's a subscription service means it's not really doing anything for preservation. Um, I mean, it's doing in my opinion. something technically because they're like the games are yeah. still playable. It's accessible, but it's like, but like as soon as they enough. shut the servers off, then they're not again. Exactly. Like when, and Sony when has demonstrated on, that they don't have a problem when with we're just on like doing that. PS Seven, you know, like, and they're like, well, you know, remember that copy of Miles Morales you bought? It's just gone. Yeah. Yeah. Which sucks. Yeah, it does um, suck. It's stupid. To answer Mumjum's question, I think. 
I think it would need to have, like Chris said, there there isn't one game that would do it for me. However, if they had like the entirety of the infamous games available for download, including the DLC Festival of Blood, and they had like those sorts of things, you know, like, um, I don't know, Catherine's if- available on PC and back compat on Xbox. Now, like a lot of these things have been kind of answered by Xbox's backwards compatibility initiative. For me, a lot, like a lot of this it's a lot of the, like, the PS3 exclusives. It's Killzone 2. It's Killzone 3. But yes. Yeah. What's also dumb to me is that a lot of those games that they list are things that I probably bought digitally. Yeah. Even PS1 games on my PSP or my Vita, which is also absent from the list, by the way. Uh, yeah. Like that copy of uh, Symphony of the Night that I own on PSN that I could play on my PS3 or on my PSP, like if that's on there and I'm not allowed to play it and it's a downloadable game that I have to pay a subscription to play, that's even worse. Like that's even more of a slap in the face because it's like you're telling me that this thing works and I can download it and I paid for it a long time ago, so why can't I play it? Oh, because I'm not subscribed to this thing. That is incredibly yeah. stupid, and I'm not a fan of that. So, but we'll see because yeah. this game list is going to come out, and I bet you that this will be a problem that people have not really thought about. Well, and it's also like this will change over time. Like just because sure. it is what it is right now, it is not like people are going to get mad on the internet like they always do, and then so oh, yeah, going to yeah. do something else, and then by the time they figure it out, we're all moved on. Like <laughs> you know, it's just the way that they've been this whole generation. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Lumbago kind of in the chat kind of speaks to something that I was going to say, which is Steam Deck may change a lot of things too, making PC more attractive to people who have historically preferred mobile or Switch. Yeah. This is one of the things that I was going to mention uh, as you were talking about this. This is a huge thing that has pushed me towards playing on PC because I am realizing, or I mean, I realized this years ago, but it is becoming more and more evident how fickle these console manufacturers are and how willing they are to just cut our legs out from under us on stuff that we've paid for. And then because try to as make soon you as my PS3, Exactly. As soon as my PS3 died, I'm like, okay, I took really, I took extremely good care of this thing and it died through no fault of my own. It just stopped working. Um, and now all of the stuff that I had on there is unavailable to me unless I buy a new PS3, which is something that outside of this small handful of games is basically a paperweight to me. Um, Mine's and in that box. Oh no, the box is in the other room. Never mind. There, over and there, there, then there's other <laughs> there's other uh, things out there like, uh, and this is something that I was going to talk about earlier. Uh, people who approach the PC landscape with that same idea towards preservation and availability and consumer focus, like kind of business practices. As much as you may hate CD Projekt Red, GOG or GOG or good old games has been focused on bringing older PC games into the front where you can buy them legitimately and, and then you just have them. They actually work. You're buying them. They are DRM free. You can just download the file and you just have it. You can move it between however much of whatever that you want. Um, and that is awesome. And between that and emulation, like there is a, there is a degree to which I have felt kind of like my hand has been forced to go to PC gaming because I don't just want to be beholden to Nintendo or Sony when they decide to turn games that I've bought into something that it requires a subscription service for. Yeah. Like I've, how many times have we, have any of us bought Link to the Past or Super Mario World? And now we have to have this. Now, granted the subscription for Nintendo Switch Online is cheap and you can also play stuff online and they've added like new cool stuff like, Here's a here's like a modded version of this where you begin Metroid One with all the weapons and all the armor and you can just do whatever you want. Like, but there's also probably cool. a Nintendo has done too. stuff. <laughs> but yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. And uh, and I think that that's important to think about. As to really think about what you are trading away for being in inve- for allowing yourself to be invested so heavily in these ecosystems. As someone who owns these games on the original hardware, on the switch subscription service and through emulation. Like I am surprised how often I do go and play it on the switch. Like just having, I mean, yeah, if you have, there's the, the, but it's like the, it's the convenience of it. It's the fact that I can dock it on dock. Like, I wonder how much of that is going to change when I do have my steam deck, 
um, if that becomes my new like thing for the, all of this. Um, yeah. But it, it, I'm when it first came out, I was like, I'll subscribe to it for a year and we'll see what happens. And it, like, I played all Banjo Kazooie. I've been playing a lot of Mario Tennis. Uh, Mario Golf comes out next week, or maybe this week. Um, and like, I have an N64, um, an HDMI modded N64 sitting in the living room, hooked up, and I'm just like, no, nah, I'll play it on Switch. <laughs> doesn't make any yeah. sense yeah well, which is fair it's yeah. because it's more convenient to have it all in one place which is why i think people want the ability to play their old especially their old digital games or if it's a cd game they want to be able to play those on just things they have yeah um yeah but i think yeah i do agree uh the, the steam deck i think is going to be the yeah the big thing for a lot of people